What's up, Foot Clan? It is mailbag time, and there was a little bit of news over the weekend. Julio Jones, we break down the trade from both sides, from the Titans to the Atlanta Falcons. Don't miss a moment. Hey, Foot Clan, if there's ever been a year to make the dads in your life feel loved and appreciated on Father's Day, it is this one, and that's why I'm honoring my dad with a heartfelt, sentimental gift for the whole family uh, that we can cherish together, and that is StoryWorth. They're an online service that helps your dad, grandfather, father-in-law, whatever father figure in your life, uh, share stories through thought-provoking questions about their memories and personal thoughts, a fun new way to engage with them, especially if you can't be together in person. And so what they do is uh, StoryWorth emails your dad a different story prompt, questions that maybe you've never thought to ask, like what's your favorite story about your father or what's your proudest moment in life? And there are lots of other things. You know, we're, we're living in the digital age, and this is a way to build a real keepsake and physical uh, memory book uh, about your father or your father figure. And uh, there's no shortage of surprises when reading all of these stories. And so basically after a year, they compile all your dad's stories, photos, and they put it all together in a keepsake book and they ship that for free. And so this is a really, really neat way um, to connect as a family. So give your dad the most meaningful gift this Father's Day with StoryWorth. Get started right away with no shipping required by going to storyworth.com slash footballers. You get $10 off your first purchase. That's storyworth.com slash footballers for $10 off. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your host, Andy Holloway. Jason Moore and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was that voice? That sounded like, uh, like a, you, you're a giant cat, but you're the bad guy, and you definitely have a stoke. I was trying to take advantage of my that was emphysema, Jason. Ruined voice from the Phoenix Suns game last night. I was, you know, I could get to new places. Now, if you ruined your voice watching a sporting event, clearly you were you were there. Um, I was there in spirit, Mike. <laughs> the television was right in front of my face. My boys were with me, and and I will be there um, tomorrow. So. Good luck with the next show. I have wow. You're I have going to never, be destroyed. You can't not yell at a live event. I have never ruined my voice at home. At home, in the stadium, many many times, but at home, never. Well, I That's asked Jason, did he watch the game with some people? And I was expecting, oh, you know, like if I was with a big crowd at my house, I could see myself screaming and yelling. Yeah, but I, it was just your voice. Forgive me for loving my boys. <laughs> to the point of losing your voice. You gotta learn the power of the fist pump, man. The silent. Oh, I hit. Silent I hit furniture. Pump. That's right, what I do. Writing that down. That's All a right. good. That's a good tip. Because because I you know I lost my voice like a little while ago, uh -huh. and I was still watching Suns games, and so I I started bringing the just smash the furniture. Well, and you could do the like smack 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 against the furniture. Absolutely. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Man, where that was means... this advice before last night's game? Uh, welcome <laughs> into the show Tuesday, June 8th. We are recording this Tuesday, June 8th. So, um show's getting up a uh just a smidge later today. It's uh, a little smidgy. We had uh, uh the UDK release and uh, we gave the staff the day off yesterday as a makeup day for Memorial Day cuz they were working hard on the UDK for release. And so we are in here today, and that's good because that just gives us more time um, to get our voices right and get ready to talk about this Julio trade. Oh, brother. And all the implications. So uh, we'll do that momentarily. A reminder, you can check out the UDK at ultimatedraftkid.com, our website, thefantasyfootballers.com. All the rankings are up for 2021. Um, you got player profiles on there, a lot of resources to help you get your team right and ready for the upcoming draft season and 17-week and NFL season. You can watch the show, youtube.com slash thefantasyfootballers. Subscribe, click the bell over there. Uh, the quick question some people were asking recently, uh, what does the schedule look like as far as uh, the rest of the season for the fantasy footballers in terms of how many shows you are doing a week? Um, this comes in off of Instagram from Aiden. Wants to know what the schedule's like. Mike, why don't you break it down? In July, we move to 
uh, three episodes, currently sitting at two, and the releases will be Tuesday, Thursday, and then you get a bonus weekend show Saturday. So, you know, you're out there, you're doing the, the yard work, you're doing the chores. Well, Saturday, you've got a podcast to listen to, and then August through December, that's when the marathon begins. That is five shows a week. And wait, there's more. If you want, if you want an extra podcast, if five is not enough in August, you get a bonus one for supporters at jointhefoot.com. Yeah, if two's not enough right now, you get a bonus right over there at jointhefoot.com. Also so, true. Yeah, three three a week in July. Five. If three's not uh, <laughs> enough in July, you can get a bonus <laughs> for the footcast. Voice is going to surprise me all day long. Uh, Jason, I want to give you props before I get into the news. I mean, um, obviously, I mean, we've been doing the show for a while now. Uh, right. This is episode uh, 1060, not counting footcasts, not counting all the just extensive reporting work that we do on the side. And you, you really went out on a limb. You hit Twitter, mm-hmm. and you broke down some of the kind of finalists. Look, I just shared what my sources were telling me and, about the – Possible destinations uh, for Julio. There were a few of them. Yeah, you broke down maybe like twenty of the of the most likely destinations, and uh, to your credit, the Titans were one of those twenty. <laughs> I was right. I told you all. <laughs> Eat it. Uh, and so I I understand why uh, Pat McAfee brought you on the show to break it down and um, one for one. Yeah, in uh, your reporting, there career. won't be many more. I found a way to be. Very accurate. <laughs> I figured out who Jason is. He is, uh, and this reference will not hit with you guys, so this is for the listeners at home. Okay. Uh, he is Pete from the Disney Christmas Carol. So if you want to figure that out, what Jason is right now, that's who he is. All right. <laughs> News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Just to pull the room, since I haven't introduced our producers, Al Borland, Judge Giamatti, uh, did that reference land for either of you two? No, sir. Not at all. No. Okay. That's okay. what I said. It's not for this it's room. It's a deep cut. It's one, for Mike's children. One out of five. That's okay. Mike's kind of a one out of five Yeah. everywhere else. Once anyway. you look it up, you'll go, oh, of oh, course. That's, you're the Fulton Reed of the show. Do you get that reference? Yes, I get that reference. <laughs> Because I am cultured. <laughs> you get that reference, Jason? Uh, yes, but I'm curious. Uh, remind me, who, who am I? I want. I want to look this Pete up. Pete from the Christmas Carol. Well, yeah. Pete's the big guy from uh, Pete the Cat. Oh, yeah. okay, all right. Well, he, uh, yeah, he's a cat. We he's... need. We really need to talk Julio Jones Sorry. right now. <laughs> um, all right, Julio Jones was traded to the Titans. It was Julio and a 2023 sixth rounder for a 2022 second round pick and 2023 fourth round pick. It will save the Falcons $15.3 million in cap space. And the Titans, who, after losing Corey Davis, Adam Humphreys, Joni Smith, they looked a little bit sus on the offensive side of the ball. It was A.J. Brown and dot, dot, dot. Josh Reynolds was a sleeper candidate, maybe. Sure. Ferkser was hanging out there as uh, next man up. And all of a sudden, Julio Jones arrives, and this team looks completely different. Last year, Corey Davis, 92 targets in 14 games. There are plenty of targets for Julio in Tennessee. So let's start. I mean, this is going to be a – everyone wants to hear the full breakdown. So let's start on the Tennessee side of the football. Uh, Impacts to A.J. Brown, to Julio, to Tannehill – what was your reaction for, for the Tennessee side and, and this destination for Julio? Uh, I think this is great for Tennessee. Absolutely phenomenal. You can't just add a wide receiver like this usually for a second rounder <clears throat> unless you are trading with Bill O'Brien. And so, <laughs> right, right. Y- you know, usually this nets you like Muhammad Sanu, and instead you're adding a first ballot Hall of Fame wide receiver. This is a very good landing spot for Julio. It could have been far worse. Yeah, it's probably the best landing spot out other than staying with Atlanta, which we knew was no longer a possibility. As look, the salary cap is I've it, as imaginary as it has been, the salary cap finally got somebody and they had to move on from Julio Jones. So I I'm I'm with you Jason that going somewhere where he can at least maintain a a a very nice target share. I mean, 
not that he wasn't going to do that, but he goes in and uh, with all the vacated targets, the vacated target shed there, he, he is still really solid for fantasy. For perspective, last year, 17-game pace for Atlanta versus Tennessee, Atlanta threw for about 1,000 more yards than the Tennessee Titans did. So efficiency is the name of the game. Now, they've proved it over several years being able to be efficient. Ryan Tannehill could still put up big fantasy weeks. A.J. Brown, even sharing target share last year, was was great. Um, but I do think that there may be a little bit more of the boom bust uh, ping pong between these guys a little bit through the year. Do you agree with that, that there may be some some games where, look, the play-action pass – uh, opens up a deep bomb for Julio, but then the next week it's a it's a Derrick Henry three touchdown performance. Yeah, that that's certainly in what will likely happen. Uh, and we went so we updated our rankings, you know, it, as soon as we possibly could for after the news broke, and it did. I mean, it the only person who moved up for me was Ryan Tannehill. He is to me is the true benefactor of this getting Julio Jones uh, in that trade. Like AJ, quarterback seven last season. Yeah, so Ryan Tannehill, I, I didn't go out of control. I mean, Ryan Tannehill, but he jumps into my quarterback one range again. For Julio Jones, the biggest question here is he's always been great for yardage, but Julio touchdown Jones uh, was just like a, a fun bit on the show, and we've never we've never really gotten – gaudy like out of control touchdown numbers from Julio Jones and going to the Titans he will have to increase those because the yardage will be there but will will the touchdowns be there for Julio Jones because right now Julio is is sitting as a lower range wide receiver two for me where while AJ Brown is still in the wide receiver one range I think you're the lowest on Julio right now based on our first pass at at yeah the projections I think Jason and I are very, very similar in the 14-15 range at the okay. position. You're 100% right. Now, I think that that, you know, Matt Ryan's had struggles in the red zone for a long time. I think that the efficiency can improve uh, for Julio, but you will need it. You will need touchdowns. So I right. think he can get to double-digit touchdowns in Tennessee. I really do. Um, but that will impact the level of consistency you get from him. Yeah, I, I have Julio right now as my wide receiver 16, which is, uh, you know, a solid wide receiver too. That's not, but that's not normal. That's we all have Brown ahead of Julio. Yes, yes. We, we do. I, I expect him to be the number one target in Tennessee. Okay. Uh, upgrade for Tannehill. He's got two great weapons there. Um, Derrick Henry, status quo. Yeah, well, yeah I mean, status I mean, it's quo. good for him. Yeah, no, it's fantastic for, for Derrick Henry. I mean, you – Stack the when, box. When it was A.J. Brown, there was going to be some defenses that could get away with just selling out to stop the run and because you have a great corner who you, you can match up on A.J. Brown. But now you, you can no longer do that. It it uh, I didn't I didn't really modify uh, my my stats for, for Derrick Henry because he was already projected extremely high. But the safety of Derrick Henry, those those concerns about can you shut down the Titans from from game to game? I think those have uh, have gone away. And Jason brought up if an injury to AJ Brown were to happen, the yes. submarining of the entire offense that was on on the table and what that would mean to Derrick Henry, it's not going to happen anymore either with Julio Jones there. Flipping to the Falcons side of the equation, Calvin Ridley. Oh man. <laughs> Stands alone atop the depth chart. Oh, man. Um, I found – look, I I posted, I think, um, on Twitter asking people for their biggest fantasy football mistakes over the last five years and got like 300 answers. I got to go through them all and see. You know, I, I read quite a few of them. Every, a lot of like drafting quarterbacks too early was in there. But I do realize like I sometimes I make fun of Mike as being like a contrarian. Like your tendency, what? your tendency to go against the grain a little bit. Uh, probably your love of Colin Coward. That's probably why he's such a contrarian. You want to mimic, <laughs> oh, yeah. mimic him. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> but I did realize that my gut reaction to Calvin Ridley on this move was completely wrong, because I I, I found myself wanting to find the anti consensus viewpoint for Calvin Ridley. Like it's too simple, right? It's too simple to just remove Julio 
extrapolate the the handful of games Calvin Ridley played without Julio onto the future and like that's just too simple. There's more nuance to it. No, there's not. Yeah. I mean, I got I got yeah. there. I got there. There's not. It, it's just sometimes simple is simple. And he he's he's a hundred yard a game guy without Julio Jones throughout his career. He's an elite intermediate pass catcher. Matt Ryan excels at that. They throw the ball more than almost any team in football. Um, he's he's already proven the use case of of being the number one with double coverage. He succeeds in double coverage more than almost anybody in football. He scores like there isn't there isn't a trap door for Calvin Ridley. No, like there's, there's not something that's going to go wrong. There's a guaranteed 160 plus targets, and if you have that many targets while being talented, like. You're going to be great for fantasy. Julio Jones has scored double-digit touchdowns once in his career. That was his his sophomore year. He had ten, uh, 10 touchdowns. His other high that he's hit a couple times, eight touchdowns. Calvin Ridley has already, already has two seasons above that eight-touchdown mark, and he's played three years. Yeah, like, and, and then you have – you have the Kyle Pitts discussion that we're going to have. Thank goodness Jason's <laughs> voice is gone. Um, but, but like that's going to be another weapon in that offense where, you know, Calvin Ridley is not going to be the only part of the and Hayden Hurst too. I mean, genuinely, Hayden Hurst will be two tight end sets. Hurst will be out there. He'll be catching passes. Kyle Pitts will have an opportunity to break records as a rookie. And Russell Gage, I tweeted this this weekend from the bye yeah. week on. With Julio, who was intermixed in these weeks, but from the bye week on last year, Russell Gage was on pace for 140 targets, 90 receptions, 1,000 yards, and eight touchdowns. So he was the wide receiver 18 in that span. So if you now people want me to not talk about it because they Russell Gage is there as this you know secret weapon for your draft ADP, but he'll have um, a PPR floor. Yeah, I think he he's interesting because you had. Uh, you had a few games at the beginning of the season for where Julio Jones was out, and Russell Gage, you know, he was like, "Oh, this is a great stream," and he ended up flopping and and doing nothing for fantasy. But over the second half, after the bye week, when Julio Jones was you know out for the extended period of time, that's when things changed for Russell Gage. There was clearly a a shift in the offense of how they were going to try and get him involved. It is. Matt Ryan can they the Falcons may not be a great team, but Matt Ryan can easily sustain two elite uh, uh, pass catching weapons. Now, will h how much does Kyle Pitts siphon away from the potential sleeper hit or breakout of Russell Gage? That remains to be seen. But while his ADP will climb, I can't imagine people are going to be you know fighting over each other to draft Russell Gage. He's going to be extremely interesting in those uh, mid to later rounds. We keep putting walls up for Kyle Pitts to break through, right? Like the wall first, you know, it's, um, you know, the draft capital wall and he breaks through, becomes the highest draft capital tight end in history. You know, then it's the rookie statistics and target share wall. And he breaks through that with Julio's uh, departure. I am curious where he ended up in your ranks after you adjusted him, Mike. He is four for me. Wow. So he is uh, statistically above Andrews and Hawkinson. He is behind Kelsey Waller and Kittle. It is a clear path. It doesn't mean he will do it, but it is a clear path for Kyle Pitts. He's, he is still, at, even after the modifications, he's still at tight end seven for me. And for me, he's at six. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness gracious! <laughs> so uh, I've got him ahead of Goddard, ahead of Gasicki, ahead of Higby, but I still have him behind the the Mark Andrews and T.J. Hawkinson. So I'm, I refuse to believe that the rookie <laughs> is going to beat those guys. What I would do is I would I would probably wave farewell to the Mount Ryan. Um, like he's not going to be a QB one for yeah. your team. Yeah, it, he's going to have his games. But he feels more like um, like maybe Matthew Stafford has felt in recent years where – Just a streaming guy? Yeah, you know, they get into a shootout. Like I think Jason and I were talking this weekend. I don't think this is a very good team. We're, we're a little bit confused, right? Like Atlanta gets rid of Julio Jones, but then they spin that pick on Pitts. They're kind of clinging to the future. They're kind of clinging to the past. Um, they could have gone quarterback at four. 
I think they wanted to take one more shot. You know, Arthur Smith certainly wants to go out he there. He has but a plan. I just wonder if he's going to be there, Steve Wilkes. Gotcha. The one year uh, in Atlanta. But we'll see. Yeah. But uh, he will have two tight end sets out there the way he had them in Tennessee. And, he'll, you know, Hayden Hurst can catch the football. So um, you're going to see Russell Gage, Calvin Ridley, Hurst, and Pitts. I mean, Matt Ryan is still a good quarterback, and he still has yes. weapons. Yep. But over the last two years, when he's played without Julio, he has scored five fewer fantasy points per game. So it's just simple math. You're better with Julio Jones. You're worse without Julio Jones. All right. Anything else from that you know, humongous trade? We'll be updating all the videos for the Ultimate Draft Kit today. Mm -hmm. We've already done all the projection um, changes sleepers and and those have been changed as well so now, before we jump into the mailbag though i want to thank today's sponsor manly band guys manly bands yeah it's not just one no and, it, and it's not like a rock group how many fingers you got you got 10 yes well most of us well most. that's fair but i'm just saying you can get a lot of these manly bands you can manly bands guys for the better part of our lives or better halves have been uh they've been getting the 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 cool wedding rings Right, you know, it, when you get engaged, it's a, it's a huge to do when you're trying to pick out the perfect ring, and there's not much thought given to your ring. That changes now because that is nonsense, fellas. You should care about your ring, and Manly Bands is working on it. And, and check this out: to get started, you can order the Manly Band, uh, the Manly Ring Sizer, and that will ensure your ring's going to fit. And once you know your size, it's time for the fun part. Manly Bands has insane insane uh rings that you can choose from gold wood antler get to the dinosaur one steel <laughs> dinosaur bone even the meat the meteorites that killed the dinosaurs right you can get those too i mean it's it's absolutely don't wear them together though no that would be that'd be a, dangerous no, well that's just that's not a fair thing to do no right. to you know shout out to the dinosaurs yeah shout out t-rex what's up <laughs> pour one out for <laughs> the velociraptors but you could get a ring man out of a meteor yeah it, it's a, a Jack Daniel, a Jack Daniel whiskey barrel collection available at Manly. That's Bands. how the dinosaurs actually die. <laughs> <laughs> They're really reckless. They're reckless. Yeah. Uh, so check. So go to. Uh, you're gonna get a discount, of course, because they're sponsoring the show. To order your Manly Band and get 21 percent off. It's a lucky number, I guess. 21 yeah. percent off. It is 2021. Plus, oh yeah. Yeah, oh, good call, Jason. Plus a free silicone ring. Go to manlybands.com/footballers. That's manlybands.com slash footballers, code footballers, for 21% off Manly Bands, the best rings, period. All right, and we want to thank Omaha Steaks for supporting the show Omaha? today as well. Summer's almost here. Father's Day's around the corner. Um, This is a gift you need to give and receive. Uh, go to omahasteaks.com, type footballers in the search bar, and order, Dad, the Get Out and Grill assortment. Right now, this package is... 59% off. That includes 20 entrees. He's going to love them. You're going to love them. And uh, you're talking ultra juicy burgers, plump chicken breast, size desserts, four 10 ounce butcher cut New York strips. Mm. Uh, they're aged for 30 days. <laughs> <laughs> and what? Uh, why is that important? Because, Jason, you know this age equals tenderness. You get four New York strip burgers with your order as well. I have tendered. Yeah, I'm I've getting more older. tender every year. <laughs> my my son takes the caramel apple tartlets out one by one and puts them in the toaster oven and cooks them up. Really? Yeah, you can do you it. Allow, oh. But you allow him well, to I eat just, the tartlets? I, I catch them. I catch them <laughs> hiding in the corner with them. Um, <laughs> not Omaha, again. Not again. Omaha Steaks isn't just steak. <laughs> it's the very best steak of your life. Visit omahasteaks.com, keyword footballers. And get the uh, get dad that get out and grill assortment plus four free New York strip burgers and fifty nine percent off today. Send dad more than just a gift. Send him an experience he can love and share with you. OmahaSteaks.com keyword footballers. We do have some news to um, wrap up before we move on to the mailbag. Uh, Cam Newton bone bruise. Some people were worried he broke his hand, and the Mac Jones era was going to start even sooner. Uh, it's going to start soon. I'm telling you. So that that's some news. It was just a bone bruise. He's not going to be out there for a little while, though. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is this helps uh, accelerate the yeah, Mac Jones does. plan. Doesn't Mac Jones have like a little injury though? Too, I think he's got a little something in the leg region. In the, uh, I, not, a lower body. Something lower body. Mm. He's wearing a wrap or something. Something's going on there. 
Uh, ESPN's Adam Schefter reports that Gus Bus. Yeah, baby. Two year, $10 million contract extension. Beep, beep. Kind of reminds me. <laughs> terrible. That's terrible. very insulting. I feel like he's got a foghorn on this. Yeah, that, that is not the bus that's going to get first and second down carries. <laughs> beep, beep. That's a Prius. Yeah. Um, no, this reminds me a little uh, of the Mostert deal. You remember when they extended Mostert yeah. last year, gave him a little extra money, kind of gave you the, you know, he's going to be part of the equation. Did we say his full name? Gus, Gus Edwards. Okay. No, we didn't. But um, but Brooks is reminding us that we should probably say the full name of these players. Nicknames only, Brooks. Nah. Um, I mean, I said it two weeks ago. I'm out on J.K. Dobbins. Like, he's a player I'm willing to be wrong about. I think we we all talked about the fact we're a little lower than consensus on Dobbins. This doesn't <laughs> raise Dobbins up at all for me. He could be great, but Gus is trusted, and he's he's been very efficient and effective, and he's going to get an opportunity to do it not just in the fourth quarter now. Yeah, I'm. I am not out on Dobbins, but we are as a show. We are lower that, lower on J.K. Dobbins. Uh, it it just comes down to where he goes inside the draft. I'm not going to reach for Dobbins because he will. He'll have to be as efficient as he was last year, which is that's hard to replicate. And Greg Roman said the team has a running group by committee. That is his quote. Um, he says he wants to get J.K. Dobbins more involved as a receiver. That's good. He was not involved as a receiver last year. Yeah, they will get him more involved than he was last year. But what won't happen are the uh, pass rush pressure dump offs because that's the right. Lamar takeoff. Yes, that's why the passing to running back is so low. Another offensive coordinator came out. Anthony Lynn, our favorite, uh, says he's going to ride the hot hand at running back. If you go into the game and you're balling, you're going to stay in there. If it's Jamal Williams, if it's DeAndre Swift, if it's Todd Gurley. <laughs> I think they may add Todd Gurley to that backfield. I am, again, DeAndre Swift, I'm out on him this year compared to consensus. I don't trust the team. Therefore, I do not trust, trust the touchdowns. And everything else is scary. If you're in, that's fine. Now, what happens if no one ever has a hot hand? Uh, it's the warmest of hands gets in the game. <laughs> They do temperature check, and uh, if the 2.1 per carry beats the 1.9, you're in. Well, but now couldn't you argue that this means Swift will be on the field more? That, yeah, that's he, what I mean. If, if, if there is no actual hot hand, no, then you can't it would argue just be that. Swift. Well, but my point is Swift should be the hot hand more than any other player. So if he's yeah. actually out there dominating and they say, well, we're just going to leave him on the field – keep you know chunking off five yards uh, a play now I agree with your philosophy here Andy I don't like drafting running backs for teams I don't trust who I know are going to be bad and and both of those things are absolutely true here I don't trust the Lions coaching staff and they go and be a losing team so yeah. I don't want the running back but I do think Swift is super talented and could uh really be the best back well he should be. he should be the best back but you'd prefer a coach to come out and say yeah deandre swifts are number one and then we're building off of that as opposed to if jamal williams came in and does well you could lose swift that day sure that's the only part that i'm worried about uh that was today's news and notes presented by sleeper switch your league to the fastest growing fantasy platform today we're jumping into the mailbag Mailbag. Mailbag. Should have had Jay do it right there. Oh, oh. my gosh. <sighs> I'm ready. I'm just trying not to give him any possible way to break into a conversation <laughs> right now. I'll find a way. Um, Love always finds a way. In between. <laughs> never mind. In between, your, in between packs, of course. Yes. Um, all right. We're jumping into the mailbag. Lots of questions. Let's start with a voicemail. If you have a question, you can dial us, 302-464-TFFB. Leave us a message. Um, I mean, it's kind of like leaving Brooks a message, too, because he, he... He'll never get... He checks there. those voicemails and gets them into the show. So. His team does. <laughs> yes. Right. One of his <laughs> several uh, team members. <laughs> uh, you can also submit a question on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Let's jump into a voicemail. What's up, ballers? Uh, my question has to deal with the added week on the season. So I'm wondering what you guys are suggesting for a 10 team or 12 team league. So that that's the question then that how does 17 weeks 
of action impact the season compared to 16? I think I think it's mostly about the playoff weeks, right? Like, yep. do you add another week of playoffs? Do you go to one of the rounds being two weeks long? My recommendation is simply that the championship is in week 17, the week before the end. So, um, you know, all the week 17 championship leagues out there, just stay put. Yeah, I would just shift everything down a week. Exactly. So 15, 16, 17 as your three weeks for the playoffs. I mean, I think strategically, if this is just another instigator to have people build depth on their teams, great. I mean, you need a depth at 16 weeks. You need it at 17 weeks. Injuries happen to everyone. Um, so maybe this is the extra, you know, instigation for <laughs> for prioritizing that and making sure that your team is – look, you don't win it at the draft. We say it all the time. You can set a great foundation, but you're going to need to make moves this year, and that's what we're here to help you with. Every single year we get hundreds of emails talking about how uh, they started 0-3, 0-4, 0-5, and, 0 and, 0 and, 5, and, and they, they found the show, and they went on, and they won, they won the championship. Those are my favorite emails to get. But more than ever this year, you have an extra week to make the playoffs. Yes, you do. If you start slow, you're fine. Don't be the quitter, because there's always quitters in your league, and then those are free wins as you go through to week 14, and yeah. you'll make the playoffs. All right. Uh, Javante Williams question from YouTube. Gavin wants to know, how do you feel about Javante Williams this year? Uh, and then his dynasty outlook. Thanks, ballers. Uh, before you jump in, Mike, I do want to let people know, like part of the dynasty pass, which is the, uh, which is part of the UDK plus is uh, dynasty outlooks for every player. So this year is the first year we're breaking out. Like you have your redraft blurb and overview and outlook for a player. We also have some dynasty outlooks. Um, how do you feel about Javante this year with the Broncos? Uh, I think he is in a good spot. The Denver Broncos are, in my opinion, a stable quarterback play away from being a playoff team, away away from being a great team. Now, the I don't know if you guys saw the reports coming out. big at, hurdle. Uh, the reports on Drew Locke so far. No, I haven't. Uh, I, have I can guess them. Go ahead. Please guess. Um, he showed incredible maturity and has evolved into an elite passer. Yeah, but uh, but the opposite. Oh no! <laughs> oh it's been, yeah, it's been rough. So I mean, we're we're early Mr. on. Mr. Irresponsible. But but it's not looked good for Drew Locke. Really? Is it is it his play they're reporting on or his? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, not his. Whatever. Uh, but so they they need a quarterback. But they are. I think that they're a a strong team and. Melvin Gordon was it was good last year, but this team traded up in the second round f for Javante to be the future of the position for the team. So my dynasty outlook is I love Javante Williams. I think he is an incredible player who has a true three-down skill set. And built into this year is he has the chance to overtake Melvin Gordon. I'm not saying that will happen or it's going to happen immediately, but that is in the range of outcomes for Javante. If if Melvin Gordon slips, because Gordon's older, uh, and he's he's been prone to be inefficient from time to time, and if that shows up for a couple games, Javante could could take the starting job and run with it. I I don't see that as a possibility. I certainly could see him being valuable in a Melvin Gordon injury. But Philip Lindsay had 118 carries last year, and he's gone. So you're going to see a lot of Javante, but probably not enough to be fantasy relevant this year. But I I mean, Melvin Gordon's an unrestricted free agent. He's going to be gone. This team is Javante's future. Like, I, I love Javante Williams going forward. I just don't think they'll actually s let him supplant Melvin Gordon this year. I agree with Jason on that one. However, built in with Javante is the fact that if Melvin went down to injury, he has the, the draft capital and talent to immediately take over. You know, you look at these situations with these rookies. You know, J.K. Dobbins didn't get rolling until late in the season last year. Um, you know, Melvin Gordon was a lot better than last year's Mark Ingram. Yeah. Cam Akers didn't get going until late last year. Melvin Gordon's a lot better than last year's Daryl Henderson and, and Malcolm Brown. But if an injury happened, Javante could have a, a, an impact immediately. Let's grab another voicemail. Hey, ballers. That's Lou. Love the show. This is Dylan from Georgia. I was just wondering, would y'all keep Calvin Ridley for a fourth or Austin Eckler for an eighth. So thank you so much. Keep it up. Yeah. Oh, I mean, man. That, that's Eckler. I mean, it's Eckler for me. It is. Uh, fourth round wide receivers are really good. 
Like if you go look at the wide receivers going in the fourth round, they're not Calvin Ridley good, but they're not, you know, you're not taking some uh, flyer pick to add to Austin Eckler. You're grabbing a legitimate, I mean, I've seen, you know, uh, Amari Cooper in the fourth round. I would much rather have Amari Cooper. Mike Evans. And, in the fourth or, yeah, round. Yeah, or, or Mike Thielen. Evans or those guys CD with Lamb. Austin Eckler. Then, you know, who's an eighth round running back you're going to grab? Nobody. No, Naeem Hines or McKissick. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, it's, it's Eckler. Just take the value. All right. Question, commissioner question from YouTube. From somebody named Bone Collector, so be careful. Bone Collector. <laughs> that is how he introduces himself. Uh, it's me. <laughs> yeah. Bone Collector. Jason's the Bone Collector right now. Yeah, you are. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. I can't believe you did this to yourself. I, that's what feels bad. I, I was telling Jeremy before the show, he's like, oh, is it the sun? Because I, I, you know, I was up in elevation. I thought maybe it was something to do with that. He goes, was it the Suns game last night? I was like, oh, no. That's what it is from. And it's so much worse that I did this to myself. I, yeah. let, I let everybody down. Well, well if uh, just so you know, it's un unlike Chris Paul's shoulder, yours isn't getting any better over the course of the, the episode. Now, to be fair, his didn't get better in game one. Sure. And, so good. And, We're like five episodes out. Yeah, like, but like next week's, I'm I'm fully back. Yeah, but you're at the game tomorrow, live. That's why I said next week. Okay. <laughs> um Here's the question from Bone Collector. Bone Collector. <laughs> are you all doing any uh, – are we doing extra IR spots with the COVID thing this year? Or are you throwing it out the window, letting it be? Uh, the latter for me. There's yeah. There's not going to be a COVID impact to this season that is significant. doesn't mean there can't be anything. But we've – and you don't want to know why? Is Major League Baseball and the NBA are happening right now. And you can use them as a little bit of a – benchmark mm -hmm. and you know the nfl lets things impact them even less than those leagues yep all right this is a fun one right rank the dolphins wide receivers oh. don't you can't make oh. me you can't make me do that oh um oh yeah i mean ranking <laughs> ranking the wide receivers in order is not the same thing as saying they all have fantasy relevance or value so if i had to put my money on a player that will end up at the top of the ranks, it's it's Will Fuller. It's Will Fuller for me. Yeah, my, mine goes Will Fuller, Devontae Parker, Jalen Waddle. That's just how the rankings are currently. Yeah. Um, yes. Also, I would like to have none of them on my roster. Will Fuller starts the year uh, suspended for week one. Mm. and I rank him at the bottom for that week. Right. And then um, he still has Tua as the quarterback, which – Tua could absolutely take a leap. He was a rookie. You expect him to. He was drafted to be great. Um, <laughs> and I just don't believe he will ever be that. Um, I believe in Tua, but not to the degree of like a my guy. I'm, I'm not going to like plant my flag on Tua for this show because it just seems like it's just a bad career move. But it, <laughs> but but the discussion for that, and because you've mentioned like you are, you're far more bullish on Tua really uh, emerging and becoming a franchise quarterback than Jason yes. and, and myself. Wouldn't you want to take a shot then on Will Fuller? Because he is – Totally. He, like his draft price is – Yeah, no one is, wants him. Jason just said still massively it. discounted. Yeah, I mean, I, look, was I excited when he signed a one-year deal with Miami for my dynasty team? No, I was not. But I think that that is often an opportunity to kind of um, find value. The they have so many weapons, guys. They have they have an elite defense, and they have multiple first round wide receivers, first and second round weapons. They have a first round tight end. Was Gasicki first or second? I believe second he was round. second. Okay, so they have they have high draft capital weapons on this team. He will it will be to his fault. It yes, won't be it anything else. But I think he's going to have a lot of success. Still have a very very bad offensive line, so that's that's one problem for Tua. But it, it, you had. So Will Fuller is going in the ninth round right now on sleeper. He appeared. That's in, wow. He appeared in twelve games, and in half of those, he was a top twenty-four wide receiver, including like actual week-winning finishes at four, two, eight. Like Will Fuller was fantastic last year, and uh, I mean, you have the, you have the variable of the suspension of was he that good? Be because of the 
uh, the substance that led to the suspension, or was it just really this was a breakout year for Will Fuller? Well, and a big part of it's obviously the quarterback. I mean, going from Deshaun Watson to Tua yeah, just in uh, general is a massive hit. Of course, but but I'm saying if you believe that there is a path forward for Tua to be the player who the Dolphins thought they were drafting, then it's, I think you should you should go in on Will Fuller in some drafts. It's why putting Will Fuller at number one on those among those three is a layup because – whether or not he's consistent, he's shown for his whole career he can have monstrous games. Yeah, two hundred yard, multi touchdown performances. Um, all right, Liam on Instagram, who should be the second quarterback off the board behind Trevor Lawrence in Dynasty Superflex rookie drafts? Dynasty Superflex rookie drafts. Uh, I know that Mike is tempted to say that he would take Trey Lance ahead of Trevor yeah. Lawrence, which I would not. But I think I think the next guy off the board for me would be Fields. You'd take Fields over at two? Lance? Yes. Oh, I would definitely be Lance. Just the, the rushing ability is is too high. I, I did question the Lance versus Lawrence um, and landed firmly on the Lawrence side, but it was at least a legitimate question for a while in my mind. Uh, with Kyle Shanahan, the draft capital, and the, the rushing ability – Trey Lance would be my number two. And that makes sense. It, it, in Dynasty, when you're making this projection, you're not just looking at, you know, like the ceiling for Trey Lance is obvious if he's great, if he's a superstar. But you are making a, a, a bet on a player's ability to be a long-term starter at the NFL level, which I'm, I'm more confident of Lawrence's ability to do that than I am Lance's right now. And Fields. Yeah. I, I, I'm more confident – in fields than Lance. Right. That's why he's second for me. On the career arc of who's going to play 10 years and become a franchise quarterback, I'm more confident. And so I get taking him second. I just, when you look at the upside, let's say they both hit, Lance's rushing ability makes fields look like a pocket passer. Yeah. And he's it, not. And like fields was my favorite quarterback uh, when I was doing the scouting, but just the, where Trey Lance went, he, in my opinion, he doesn't have to be great. He can just be a, a good, competent quarterback with those weapons. Then you add in the rushing ability, and he will be fantastic for fantasy. I still wonder how much he sees the field this year. Yeah, that, re that remains to be seen. Um, let's say with the 49ers here, Instagram question from Chuck Alicious <laughs> says, which if my name was Chuck, frankly, that would be my nickname. Chuck Alicious. Uh, Jason, you want to? Take a crack at that name. Chuckalicious. No, ooh, never mind. Ooh, ooh. Can we delete that? <laughs> uh, which 49ers running back? You made back? me do it. I know. Uh, which, you sure you weren't, um, your voice isn't from screaming for Logan Paul in that fight? I'm pretty <laughs> I'm pretty confident, yes. That wasn't the Mayweather. <laughs> so I remember you, I could hear you hooting and hollering from down the road. Um which 49ers running back do you think you'll end up being the most happy with by the end of the year? This is a this is an <laughs> this is a regrettable question based on the trade offer Jason got in his dynasty league the other day. <laughs> I, I, I still think you have to go Mostert here. He is the starter. He'll be the most active when he's healthy, and he'll be good. It's just a matter of can he stay healthy. And yeah, and he's already not healthy again. Right. I mean that team just draws straws of walking onto the practice field. I mean, see, Brandon Ayuk's hurt too. Now, have you seen their practices? They have to try to lift these semi trucks. <laughs> That's all they do all practice long. Is they just they want to show strength and they try to lift these things. Uh, otherwise, they're doing crazy dives off of like forty foot diving boards. They, I mean, it's just these these practices. I thought are it was the control. potholes that they build into the field. The That's part of it. Absolutely, they want to make sure that they're able to avoid. They even have a. Uh, Three spots on the field with landmines. Right, it's, it's one incredible. of those. Don't hit that spot. And that's that's the field they play the dodgeball tournament with medicine balls. That's right. That's true. Like, I've seen I, it. You might want to eliminate those risky behaviors, San is Francisco. There a, is there a chance that like they just treat their injured players so well, like they get a private facility and like really nice food, <laughs> and they want this is like as every training. Oh, camp. oh, oh my <laughs> knee! Uh, I'm gonna have to go to the spa. Right. I'm. You need to toughen well, up. Xbox again? No, darn. <laughs> I don't think they have another Madden water. tournament. Ayuk. <laughs> I don't think they allow water though at practice. Oh, that could be it. Yeah, that could yeah. Be Mostert's it. banged up again. Jeff Wilson's already hurt. 
Brandon Ayuk is hurt. I mean, the maybe it should be field I off, over, I off, over Lance. I have Raheem Mostert in a dynasty league. I offered James Robinson for Trey Sermon this weekend. Oh, I would have turned that down before you even sent it to me. It was turned down I when it was it. sent I to me. With a vengeance. Uh, because the answer, Mostert just can't stay on the field, man. Well, uh, it, Trey Sermon has an injury history, so this yes, is not the right team to yes, arrive on. And that's why the answer is Wayne Gallman. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that is not an answer. That is always a question. Um, okay. Dynasty trade question from YouTube. Ben wants to know. In Dynasty, is it Ronald Jones or a 2023 first-round pick? First. Oh, 23. Hmm. No, I, I, I need to remind Jason. Like Ronald Jones is younger than, than Najee Harris, and Ronald Jones was amazing last year. I'll take Ronald Jones. Yeah. I don't, That's I, too far in the If future. it was 2022, I'd take the first, but I'll have two years of something. Yeah. And he, I agree with that, too. I, I think we said this last year because – it's just the reality for Tampa Bay. But there will be incredible fantasy value at the running back position on Tampa Bay next year. It's just a matter of identifying it. From weeks four on, Ronald Jones was a 1,300-yard, uh, nine-touchdown running back that you know caught 34 passes. From week four, that's his 17-game pace. So, um, And then they're like, playoffs come. It's important. Uh, let's go to Lenny, you're yeah. up. Yeah, I mean, they saved him. He well, he was hurt. He got hurt at the end of the year. Missed two games. Um, I'm just highlighting that on the field, he's 5.1 a carry for the entire year. No, he's he's a good he's running, a back. dynamic running back. A 90 young. yard, 90 yard touchdown will help your yards per carry. Well, sure. Thank goodness he can do that. That is fair. Um, uh, I Clyde you know, could have used a few of those. Yeah, he really could have. Clyde. Yeah, what's what's I mean, the deal, man? I see Ronald knocking out a 90 yarder. I've uh, I've answered this question before as far as like players you're avoiding. The Buccaneers backfield is one that there, there's just no value that I want them this year. That changes if it's best ball because I do think there – I think you're right. There will be a lot of value to the running game of Tampa. Mike, are you taking Ronald Jones or Melvin Gordon? Oh, my goodness. Uh, probably Melvin. Jason, you're taking Ronald Jones or Mike Davis? Uh, think about that for a minute. I'm taking Mike Davis and Melvin Gordon. Uh, Ronald Jones or Damian Harris, Jason? Ronald Jones. Jones is going ahead of um, Fournette in drafts, not by a lot. Uh, he's going pretty high. So, uh, Okay, let's go here. Ravens wide receiver question from Dominic. Which Ravens wide receiver is the best value this year? <sighs> Man, <laughs> that's a really funny question. It's a weird question. Like it's like if you buy three meals that none of them fill you up uh -huh. and none of them taste very good, like which is the best value? <laughs> you it's don't right. talk that way. It's Hollywood. I mean, it, it, he, he's the only one I think that will is have. He going that. behind Bateman? Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, I I don't think Bateman has a better season than Hollywood, and neither one of them are being drafted highly. So. That's you know that's the other side. I thought right? that it's was like, the part of the value equation. Well, but the value. I mean, if the value is like a ninth round, a eighth round, and a twelfth round, then you know it's like in a keeper question. You just throw those out. If they're all poor picks, it the value isn't there. Curtis There's, Samuel or Hollywood? Ooh, Curtis, Curtis Samuel. Samuel, best friend of Ryan Fitzpatrick. Come on, we saw the chalkboard. I mean, yeah, they're they're going around the same range. Oh, that's so, that's an easy one. That, I like that. That's question. okay. <laughs> that is the that is the answer. The best value from it's the Curtis Baltimore Samuel. Ravens <laughs> is Curtis Samuel. Heard it here first. Draft him. I just wanted to point out that you are giving up something to try to find the value on Baltimore. Yes. Um. All right. Dynasty download. <laughs> Dynasty download. Well, it's, now, now it's my head. Yeah. I don't know why I didn't sign off on this. I didn't approve the usage of my image in that incredible. You'll be hearing from my lawyer. Yeah, yeah. I'm suing myself. Oh, has anyone ever done that? I'm sure. Yeah, that's got to have happened. Somebody People sued are themselves. crazy. People are nuts. Um, this is a dynasty average draft position riser we want to talk about. Michael Carter running back for the Jets. 5'7", 201, fourth round pick. Uh, 
he's been uh, more attention has been thrown on to Michael Carter recently. Mm-hmm. Uh, beat writers in New York say it's just a matter of time until he ends up uh, taking over that job. I hope he still represents the value on draft day when they come or, you know, when draft day comes around, because right now he certainly is. He's my favorite kind of sleeper of the rookie class. But what are your thoughts on uh, Mr. Michael Carter? His ADP rising makes sense. His landing spot was great. That was one of the teams that we wanted one of the big names to go to because it was such a good, easy depth chart depth chart to overcome. Tevin Coleman. A depth tart? A depth tart. That sounds delicious. Mm. Yeah, you put mm. that in the toaster? Oh, Oof. a little butter on it? Oh, man. Oh, and then you get yourself a Michael Carter. It's delicious. <laughs> Michael Tarter. Uh, Michael Tarter. <laughs> oh, very nice. Oh, no. Oh, Michael Tarter. Oh. Mm. There's That's... a bakery science degree from. <laughs> Isn't that what you wanted? That is what I want a bakery science degree. Um, but the landing spot says that he'll have opportunity because Tevin Coleman is Worst. ahead of him and is awful and is injured and is always injured. Um, however, I still don't expect the team to be that great. He is not a breakaway back that's going to have the 90-yard touchdown runs. So I do see Michael Carter with an opportunity, but my projection is more of a Devin Singletary and on a worse offense. So I don't know that he's going to be great ever. I think Tevin Coleman, you can steal some weeks. He's going to go so late in drafts, and he's going to start week one as the first snap out of the backfield. So if you want to steal a few weeks of productivity – um, if you're if you invested in other rookie running backs and um I think Tevin Coleman you're just going to be able to steal a few few weeks before Michael Carter takes over. But I like him. I think there's an opportunity. I think that line might end up impressing people this year. They still got a ways to go, but they got some great pieces on that offensive line. It it'll yeah. come down to is Zach Wilson going to check it down yep. to to Michael Carter and you know just like off of his, off of Wilson's final year I don't I, you can't just say that's going to be a layup that he's going to do it. Probably going to check it down to Tevin Coleman. Oh gosh, gross! I, he's Why not run, just he's spike the ball right on the ground? <laughs> just, just punt it. Just kick it away. It's mean. But, but but the thing is, is Michael Carter is a very good pass catcher. That's where yes. I think if he's going to break out in his rookie season, it'll come it, with that. It'll only come because he is utilizing the passing game phenomenally. And if he's not, then it won't come. All right, we want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the show today. Justin Jefferson signed football. Is, it's up there on auction for $52.50 right now. That ends on Wednesday night. Kyle Pitts, oh, my gosh, they got the signed full-size Lunar Eclipse alternate speed helmet up there for $48 right now. Whew. That ends on Saturday if you went in. There are hundreds of, of daily sports memorabilia auctions. Use the code BALLERS at pristineauction.com. That'll do it for today's show in Jason's voice. We'll be back with another episode. Fist pump, Jason. Fist pump. Yeah, right. He's going to be yelling at that game. There ain't no stopping him. Goodbye. Mike and I on Thursday. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. In Foot Clan, this episode was brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Go to omahasteaks.com and use the code FOOTBALLERS in the search bar. And for a limited time, get four free New York strip burgers and 59% off. That's omahasteaks.com, keyword FOOTBALLERS.